we made our client over half a million dollars in only four months. And I'm going to break down exactly what we did to get those results for this client. I'm talking everything from the funnel. Then we're going to break down the exact ads that generate those results. I'm even going to show you ad copy. And I'm even going to show you exact text messages that we sent to those leads after they came in to get this client such crazy results. But first, before we dive in, let me actually show you what the client said about us a couple of days ago when we did a client check-in call. I don't know exactly how long we've been working together. It's been like, what, like four months, perhaps? Yeah, four months. So in four months, roughly around half a million. Yeah, I, I may be wrong. I, it could be a little slightly more, but I know for sure we're at half a million on just what's coming in from your side. I want to build this side up 10 times more. These leads, these are retail customers. You know, we're collecting big deposits, you know, phase payments. They're constantly pay. They're, they're like constant draws coming in the account faster. So I was like, oh, this is, this is what I want to scale to, you know, 1.5 to something. We need to scale this. That's what I'm seeing. I was like, we need to definitely jump all over it. But I mean, if you look at the pipeline, we're at 151 and that ain't the number. I can tell you there's another another one for 50, another one for 40. We're probably closer to half a million. Um, by my math, that's pretty good considering we haven't even like, we're not, I don't think we're getting the best out of it yet. Like we haven't done our end hundred percent and it's like, oh shit, th there's a, there's a system to be perfected here. You know, I, I can yeah. have a freaking employee for this. Now the funny thing is when I was closing this client, he was skeptical and he was a little scared to get started in the beginning because He's never ran Facebook ads before, and he's never used a software and a CRM like this one to help him follow up. So he had some objections of, oh, well, can we jump in? And how are they going to know which phone number to respond to? Is it going to look bad if, they're, if we're responding from a different phone number? And then he had other questions like, how do you know this is going to work? And people are even going to book appointments on my calendar. And so I say that to show you that it's normal and I knew we were going to get this client good results. Of course, there's always that little bit of doubt sometimes in the back of your mind as far as not your service delivery, but as far as if they're going to actually close the leads. We can do everything on our end, bring in the leads, get him booked appointments, right? Give him good leads that he can actually go out, service and close. But if his sales sucks and he doesn't have a front desk person, he's not following up properly, then it's not going to work. So you can take all these systems and, and by the way, I'm going to show you how to get the highest quality of leads you possibly can. It's not just about running a landing page ads, which is what we do. We have them fill out an entire survey to really qualify them before we even send it to the client. But if you do all this and your client sucks and he's terrible at sales, it still might not work for you. So it doesn't work for every client, but if the client's good and if he can close and he has experience, maybe he has salespeople, maybe he has a good front desk person that can follow up on leads on his behalf, you could absolutely crush it. So sometimes when you do sales calls, it's about interviewing the clients and actually making sure that they have the right structure in place to handle everything. And it's funny because just before we closed, he wanted to speak to his wife or his partner or something along those lines. And I actually ended up closing him on that spot. I overcame his objections and he closed, he signed, and then we started running ads a few weeks after. He had a couple other things that he actually wanted me to fix, like Google reviews. We did a database reactivation as well, but then we launched the Facebook ads and he has been crushing it since then. So let's dive into the ads. So this is what some of the ads look like here when we are inside the account. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh so you can see that these are live results that we are running here. And as you can see here on the right hand side, we are getting a pretty good uh, cost per result. Again, it says website lead because we are sending these to a survey. So if you send them just to like the lead form, lead quality is going to be absolutely terrible. I always like to do landing page ads. And in the beginning, you can start with just a couple questions, but then I like to really qualify people. And that's how we get quality leads. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these people, they don't want 10 million leads. They want really quality leads. And as you can see here, when we actually scroll down and look at the ads, the best ones that are performing really well are going to be the collage image ads. Now, this isn't always the case. Sometimes videos outperform images by a lot. So we have some images that we use traditionally for all clients. Well, we can make them fit any client. Ideally though, when it comes to video, the client sends us a video using our video script and then we just run that. So we have video scripts that work really well for clients. And so I just give them that and I say, hey, make a video that roughly follows the script and we run that as an ad 
you know, make sure you're standing in the project, in the field. Maybe you're kind of like showing something behind you that you've just built like a kitchen or a bathroom and we've run that. But the collage ads work really well. As you can see, the cost per lead is over that period. It was about $30 per lead. So it definitely works really well. All right, so now you're probably wondering, well, what does the actual ad copy and, and what do the images look like? So let me just show you that briefly here. So this is roughly what a collage looks like. I can't show you the live one because the client's logo is on it, but this is roughly what it looks like right here. We have a nice collage. We take their best projects and we showcase that. Another one that works really well is before and afters. People love watching that. Now for the ad copy, what I like to do is put in a review inside the ad copy. We test it. We split test everything. So we test putting the review copy at the very top and we also test putting it below the ad copy as well. So for example, a lot of people think if something isn't working, they have to like redo the ad, but most of our ads are pretty much identical. A, because I just know what works, right? After running this for clients all over the US, I just know what works, but B, you don't have to do that. Most people, when they're scrolling on Facebook, don't actually click see more, right? Where you see that right here. So you don't have to redo the entire ad copy. Just take this and we'll do a brand new testimonial. We'll keep the same ad copy. And by the way, this is just like sample ad copy. Uh, we have run this and this can work, just two sentences. But most of the time, it's a little bit longer and gives more benefits. But again, this has generated us a lot of leads. So we'll do different testimonials up top, or we'll take the actual ad copy, put that at the top, and then put the reviews below it. And this kind of reads like a landing page right on Facebook. So it gets them sold on the client and on the service before they even click into the ad. Now, also, if this is not working, instead of switching everything, we test a different headline. So we might keep the same body copy on the ad right here, but we'll add in a headline at the top. So we would add in a sentence above where it says, get the kitchen you have always wanted with a thousand dollars off or a free sink. So we'll add in sentences above that, or we switch that offer. And then the rest of it is going to be the same because that's really what catches people's attention. So when it comes to the subject line, we put in here, October Halloween special, get a thousand dollars off your dream kitchen. That's the one that we use at the time when I made this. However, we tailor it to any holiday. So right now we just had 4th of July this month. And so what we did was we did a 4th of July special and we do that to every single holiday. You always want to give a reason as far as why you're having the offer, whether you're doing a database reactivation or you're doing ads. I like to have a reason rather than just saying, Hey, get a thousand dollars off. It, it doesn't seem as believable. So that's kind of how we do it. Now, the true marketers in this situation are going to be the ones that win. You can take a winning headline and also winning ad copy. You could put it into chat GPT and tell it to give you four or five different variations and test that. But at the end of the day, you need to be the one that's the expert that has ideas on what's going to work better and what's going to work worse. And you get that A, by experience, but also by reading books and actually leveling up as a marketer. You don't have to be an expert media buyer, but you do have to understand sales psychology and also some copywriting. If you're serious about this business model and you actually want to get your clients results, and your business result. Also real quick, if you want our client getting scripts, our client getting strategies, our outreach, DMs, literally everything A to Z, then you can go ahead and check out the free course in the description. If you want all of our snapshots imported into your account, I'm providing all of that. It's completely free. If you don't have a high level account, then you can sign up for a free 30 day trial down below and I will give you access to everything, sales call recordings, additional services that you can actually offer, how to sell those services and how to charge high ticket. Everything is in there. So let's dive back into the video. If you're interested in actually getting better as a copywriter, check out this book here, as well as this book right here is called Scientific Advertising. I love this book. It completely changed my perspective on how we write copy and also create ads for clients. So check this out. Okay, so back into the funnels and how we actually generate the client, the result. So we ran a landing page survey that is very similar to this right here. You can see we have the headline and the client's logo. And we actually had a survey on here that asked a bunch of questions. It asked name, email, phone number, it has details about their project, and also it asked for their zip code. Now in the beginning, this is how we run it. Later on, we'll even add address. So we're asking for the person's address 
in this funnel. In the beginning, we started with only a couple questions, name, email, and phone number. And the way you structure it is you ask details about the project. And the reason we do a survey is because it's easier to fill out one question than to see a whole form with five, six, seven plus questions. So if they just see a little box that says, hey, tell us about your project, they type in one answer, and then it says, okay, great, what kind of timeline do you have on the project? And then they fill that out, now they're way more likely to finish the whole survey than if we had seven questions right there in front of them. So that's why we use surveys. And as you scroll down, we actually just put proof on the client, so if they don't have video testimonials, which most don't, we just put in screenshots of reviews, both from Facebook, from Google My Business, all that stuff in here, and then we have some other stuff down below that. This is the page they see after they fill that out, and this is dynamic, so it actually says their name right here, almost done, it says name, so almost done, Bob, look out for a text in a few minutes from us, we sent it to blank, and we actually put in their phone number that they put in on that initial landing page right here, so that way they check their phone number, and that's what we do, and then we get them to book, and then we show them more, more, and more proof, and then on the thank you page, we typically have the client, ideally, we have the client film, like a thank you video, hey, thanks so much, uh, for submitting your information and so forth. That way, when the client calls them, the voice sounds familiar and it makes it a little bit easier for them to close the client. And the cool thing is, when you actually look at this, we are getting, so the estimate scheduled, as you can see here, this is like an in-home appointment, but the client isn't tracking that. Like he mentioned in our uh, meeting, that's something he needs to improve on, but the intro call is what we are booking for him. So this no answer, this isn't uh, tracking properly, but the intro call is 56%, meaning 56% of people that fill this out also book an initial consultation. This is amazing. Okay, this is going really, really well because they are essentially saying, yes, call me at this time. And this works way better. This is something no one really is doing in my industry. They are just simply delivering leads for clients and then saying, yeah, call them when you have a chance. But the biggest thing that we found is that clients, when you do that and you just deliver leads for them, they just forget to respond or they call them or they text them one time and then that's it. When we did the client meeting with the client, we identified there was one huge project that they closed that was worth over $100,000. And this project, this lead responded to them to our automated text messages three days after the campaign was running. Meaning if the client texted them and called them one time and they didn't answer, and then they called them a second time and they didn't answer and the client gave up, they would have never landed this huge project. But because we had the automations going for three days, sometimes we have it going for four days and it's going for a while, they then were able to get that lead on the phone and they closed him. It was a six figure project for the client. So there's so many people in here that are wondering, oh, well, well, why do they keep paying for high level? What's the value? This right here is the value. That's the beauty of setting it up properly and knowing the text messages that are going to be compelling, knowing the copywriting to use in the ads so they can come in here and we can get these people on the phone, right? And this is the huge benefit that the client is getting when they work with us and it also makes you stand out from other agencies. This right here is exactly what happens when a lead books in an initial phone call consultation. Again, this is not at their house, so it says, Roseanne, your initial phone call consultation has been scheduled and reserved for okay, Thursday, July 6th, 10 a.m. Please reply with yes. So we get that double opt-in. And this is very, very important. So that way we get a confirmation for the client that, hey, yes, I will show up. And again, all this is, is they're gonna get a phone call from the client. And then we also book it automatically in the client's calendar. And I help them during the onboarding sync this with their cell phone. This is huge because a lot of times they forget. You can't just sync it on their go high level calendar. You want to sync it with their Google calendar on their phone and you set up notifications that tells them or their front desk people to actually respond and call these leads. And so let's actually scroll down and see what happened. By the way, you can check out the tags here, right? So we have a tag. This came in from Facebook, Facebook landing page. We see that they scheduled and also we see that they are responding. Um, and so as you can see here, okay, they need to change the appointment. How do I do that? And then they jump in and they actually respond. Now they should just call it, but they texted them, hey, we can give you a call now. I'm free until 3 p.m. So the lead called my client and then in here, they ended up sending a photo and what they want done. And this is an amazing lead already for the client. All I have to do is call them and schedule the estimate, schedule the in-home appointment. And so maybe they, on the phone call, the client might've even said, hey, text us a photo of exactly what you want done. That's exactly what happened.
Now, in the case that the person does not book an appointment, this is the text message that they get. We say, hey, name, we've got your information. Did you get a chance to book an appointment on our calendar? Boom. We put in a link to the calendar so that way they can book it and we re-engage people. Now, again, this is just with the first text message. We do have more text messages. We, we keep following up with them and get them to book that initial phone call consultation. And here's one sample message. Hey, we're still holding your spot. Just want to make sure we get your application. Want to make sure we service you and so forth. And so the goal is to get them to respond. At first, the goal is to get them to book an appointment. And then the goal is just to get them to respond. And this is how we get the client engaged with the leads. And also, if you take a look at this, we are getting tons of leads that are coming in, right? July 3rd, okay, June 30th, 28th, 27th, right? 27th, a ton of conversations, 23rd, 22nd. So they have action. They have leads coming in every single day and it's going and it's going and it's going. So it's a beautiful thing. And also when we spoke to the client, one of the things that we told them they need to improve on is actually tracking everything in here. So in here, it only says there's one project closed and it doesn't show the whole half a million that they actually closed because we actually do go in here and we check and we optimize the ads based around what works. So as an example, let's take a look at this contact here. Let's say they sold this project. I can see exactly which ad they came from. I can see that they booked. I can see which survey they came from. And then we can optimize the ads based around that. So far, what we're doing is we are taking a look at who booked this initial call and we're optimizing it around that. So the cost per lead is great, as you saw in our previous screenshot. But more importantly, we are tracking what leads book appointments, and then doing more of that so it works better. Once the client starts to actually track and mark which leads are getting closed, we're going to have even better ads. The lead price might go up a little bit, but they're going to be getting way more sales because we're really tracking and targeting the people that are similar to the ones that have closed sales before. And we'll be able to get a good idea of which ads are bringing in sales. Now you take this right? Take experience from a client like this times multiple clients all over the US and you can't help but be an expert. And also this client is going to want to grow and to continue using your services because it just makes sense. And even if let's say they get super booked out, this happens, they get booked out and they don't want to keep running ads because they're too busy. The projects are too big. They still keep using the software because we integrated it with their website. We have live chat. We have all the tracking in here. Why would they want to stop? Why would they want to stop paying you to access all these amazing features, the automatic responses? I just showed you one project that if we didn't properly follow up with them, then they would have never gotten that. And that's worth six figures, just that one project. Not to mention there was one lead that came in from their Facebook page. So if we didn't have their Facebook page linked in here with automations, they might have just completely forgotten that, right? They're checking their emails, they're checking their phone number, but we had someone message their Facebook page. Most business owners completely forget about this or it takes them days to respond and they closed one of those projects and one of those leads because of our automations and because they saw inside of our platform, inside of the conversations tab. All in all, if you become a real marketer and you start to understand copywriting, you start optimizing your campaigns, it's going to be very easy for you to get results. And that's the beauty of niching down and really understanding a demographic is as you improve, as you level up, and as you go further along your personal evolution journey, and as you get into personal development and you start reading more and you start becoming a better marketer, everyone wins. It's exponential. Your clients will want to stay on longer. You'll feel more comfortable. You'll feel more confident and you'll be able to absolutely crush it. The big thing is you want to stay consistent, keep going. And it wasn't always like this for me. In the beginning, I didn't know what kind of ads worked. I didn't know what I was running, but that's also the benefit of working with people and actually getting feedback. Like in our community, we have people asking me, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And you can shorten your learning curve. Again, you want to think about becoming a real marketer and copywriter to get really good at this service and to really level up your skills. If you want to see more strategies like this, if you want to see how we get clients and close clients, you can check out this video right here.